we can do something about this. And, and so you put that fact, right, that we actually can do something, and you combine that with the fact that our children are right now living in fear. Like seriously living in fear. Like seriously living in fear. Our children are going to school every day, elementary, middle, high school students, having to have a drill where they are taught about how they have to crouch in a corner or hide in a closet in the event that there is a mass shooter roaming the hallways of their school. When elected, I am prepared to take executive action if Congress doesn't pull its act together. In life, one of the best ways to get weaker is to move away from resistance. The best way to get stronger is to engage resistance. <laughs> Life, life is not kind to those who are weak. This is observable, this is demonstrable. You can see this in life. When the weightlifter keeps moving up in weight and up in weight, he gets stronger and stronger. His bones get stronger, they get more dense. The, the ligaments and tendons get stronger. The muscles get bigger so that they can handle more and more weight. And, and that's, that's a perfect picture, a perfect metaphor of life. If you move away from resistance and you look toward the safe space, you get weaker emotionally, mentally, and physically. When you're always seeking that, that easy path, that easy road, you're going to be weaker and then you're gonna to have to depend on other people to take care of you. You put your ass in the liability column when you become weaker. So what you need to do as a person, if you want to be stronger, you have to engage resistance. You have to come, you have to embrace the mindset that nobody is going to take care of me. I'm on the playground all my all by myself, and the bully is gonna come up to me eventually. What am I gonna do? Well, hey, I'm an intelligent person. I, I've got two brain cells to rub together. It doesn't take two brain cells, by the way, to to think about the fact that when the the bully, the schoolyard bully comes up to me. I can use the time away from the playground to improve myself, to learn self-defense tactics. That way when the bully comes up to me, I have a fighting chance to engage him and to prevail. But I know one thing, if I just keep running to mommy and daddy or the teacher, one day I'm gonna be cornered by the bully and I'm not gonna be able to do anything. And that's what we see today with this, uh, these, these two alleged mass shootings, the one in El Paso and the other one in Ohio. And, and, and all the ones that we've had in the past. Nobody sits there and goes, no politician will get up there, and I'll tell you why, I've already said this in, in a previous video, but no politician will get up there and say, you need to empower yourself. You need to stop relying on us. Us writing laws isn't gonna make you safe. Quit crying, you baby. Go arm yourself, learn self-defense tactics, buy a weapon, become familiar with it, become proficient, learn how to use it so that when you are in that Walmart or you are in that bar or you are standing in that post office and somebody comes in, you can engage the resistance because you've trained to engage the resistance. You didn't seek the safe space. If, you're, if, if Cory Booker cared about you, if, if Diane Frankenstein cared about you, if Nazi Pelosi cared about you, if Kamala Harris cared about you or Pete Buttigieg, if any of those people cared about you, they would talk about you empowering yourself instead of you relying on us, the politicians, to make you safe by worthless pieces of paper. When you're sitting in that bar and they've, they've made all the laws they could possibly make, do you actually think you're going to be safer when somebody comes with a, with a firearm and starts shooting up the place? This piece of paper is not going to save you. You could have two million, ten million, a trillion pieces of paper between you and that armed assailant and guess what all your life you sought the easy road you wanted Cory Booker to take care of you you wanted Elizabeth Warren to come and swipe away your student loan debt oh good I don't have any student loan you relied on an Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and now you're looking in your wallet going how come I don't have any money oh it's because it cost a hundred trillion dollars for the Green New Deal you look for that easy road and when you make life easy for yourself when you try to pave it without any stones and I don't want to I don't want to sprain my ankle or hurt my foot or step on a piece of glass instead of toughening up and just walk around barefoot and, and getting the bottom of your your feet tough now all of a sudden you're a tenderfoot and you st you, you walk on a, a carpet and you step on a cheerio and it takes you down minimal resistance will take you down if you don't toughen up 
arm yourself everywhere you go. You go into the store, conceal it. Are you going to the post office? Conceal it. Is there something on the door that's saying no firearms allowed? Guess what? I guess I'm not going to eat at that establishment because I love my family. Uh, this is so funny. I do these videos and yesterday I walked into a place with me and my girlfriend and I'm like, you're not going to believe this. She goes, what? I said, I'm not armed. We are, we are sitting ducks right now. And it, 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 it came over me like water. I, I wasn't fearful, but I was like, what a freaking hypocrite I am. I'm not even armed. Babe, I love you and I can't even protect you right now. What kind of love is that? Listen, if you are, if you are depending on a freaking politician to save you, you are literally insane. We all know that politicians are the scum of the earth. They are, they are on the bottom of the food chain as far as morality is concerned. You can't get, other than, you know, a, I don't know, a, a banker, you can't get more low on the morality totem pole than a freaking politician and you're gonna trust them to bring, take Congress away from recess, bring them back so we can create more worthless piece of paper that's gonna keep nobody safe and empower criminals. Laws empower criminals because prim criminals live in a world that don't respect laws and they don't respect your life. And if you, if you try to, you're not going to take 300 million guns off the street. There's always going to, criminals are always going to have easy access to firearms. How can people get, why can't they get that through their thick skulls? So I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm at this place with Trish and I'm like, man, I, 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 I'm, I'm beside myself because I'm telling you guys, hey, everywhere you go, be armed. And I just forgot to bring my, my firearm. And it's easy to do. So Corey Buck, Booker sits up there and goes, well, we, we obviously know that, uh, you know, uh, open carry and people carrying around their firearms doesn't work. Because look, well, look what happened in El Paso, El Paso, Texas. They still died in their, their open carry state. They can carry firearms and not one of those. He said one or 2,000 people in Walmart. I doubt there were that many people in Walmart. Maybe, maybe there were. But you know, even in my state of Oklahoma where open carry is uh, legal and on November 1st, they're going to make it constitutional carry. Oh, thank you, government. Thank you for making something a reality that's a reality anyway, but you're just trying to make it look like you're doing us a favor. Thank you so much, Oklahoma government. Anyway, we're going to become constitutional carry. I rarely see anybody open carry. And a matter of fact, I would say over 95% still don't take it upon themselves to defend themselves. It's easy to forget, guys. I forgot yesterday, and I'm all about carry firearms, arm yourself, train yourself, become familiar with your weapon so that when you're in that situation, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And I didn't bring it. I'm guilty. If, if, and if somebody came in and blew us away, it's, it's, that's on me. That is on me. You can do something to, and it doesn't take much. You can do something to defend yourself. My God, you know how many people you could stop with this thing right here? You know how many bad people you can stop? So now you got um, Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Cory Booker. They're all running the circuit and CNN's bringing them through like a revolving door and then bringing on the sad stories and try to, try to incite emotion. Um, Anderson Cooper had these two, I'm, I might do a video on it later today, but Adam, Anderson Cooper had these uh, two parents who shielded their kid with their body. It was a two month old kid. The kid broke its finger supposedly. And now the, the two parents are gone and this, this uh, child has no parents now. Guess whose fault that was? Wasn't the government's fault. Well, yeah, it was partially the government's fault, but all that, all that responsibility I put on the head of the household. I'm not naming any names or anything like that, YouTube, so chill out. The, the deal is, guys, those parents, that, that father at least, that no, that father and mother, both of them, it's both of their responsibilities. They could have prepared themselves, they could have armed themselves, so when a situation like that does come down, guess what? They're at least ready for it. It is better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So you got these parents who now are dead, and there's this child that is going to be without a without parents for the rest of his life and you got the politicians go oh look isn't that that is so sad now you know what we have to do now we have to make some laws so that we can protect you guys we need to we need to make sure that you're protected by this worthless piece of paper that we're going to enact in con congress that no no criminal is going to 
pay attention to. And it's going to happen again and again. And the politicians are going to get up there. Now we really got to take guns away. We, it's, I know it's a gun-free zone, but we need to change the signs that says it's really, 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 really gun-free zone now in a gun-free state, in a gun-free country. And then Gavin Newsom gets on there and he says, yeah, well, yeah, we, we've regulated guns in our the state of California, but here's the problem. They go across state lines and go to Nevada and they, they buy firearms there. So now we got to, now we need, we need a federal ban. Well, guess what you just did there, Gavin Newsom? He just transgressed the 10th Amendment. So they don't have any problem going against the First Amendment. Now you can't say whatever you want to say whenever you want to say it. You the Second Amendment. Now you can't have those firearms because we're, you know, it's too dangerous for everybody to have firearms. They're against the Fourth Amendment. Now, you, you can be secure in your person's house's papers and effects because we're going to do these red flag laws, these extreme risk protection orders. And if somebody sees you out in the store with a gun or whatever, they can... They can call 911 and they say he's a danger to himself and society. Tell the judge to get a warrant and the law enforcers go over there, violate your, your Second and Fourth Amendment rights, and you're done. Done. Put a fork in him. He's done. And now Gavin Newsom saying, well, it's not enough for us to have regulations in our own state. We need to regulate Nevada because they're buying the guns in Nevada and coming over here and shooting up our people. Violation of the Tenth Amendment. So you got the first, the second, the fourth, and the tenth, and who knows what else. Why even waste your breath saying, I swear to uphold the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic? Guess what? You, Gavin Newsom, are the enemy. You, Kamala Harris, are the enemy. You, Pete Buttigieg, are the enemy. You, Cory Booker, are the enemy. If you're going against the Second Amendment, these people hate you. They want you to be unarmed while you're standing in the post office or in that bank. They want teachers to be unarmed in the schools. Guys, politicians hate your freaking guts. I wish they'd call me on CNN. I'd say it. I'd say, you know, Anderson, really appreciate you coming. We don't have much time here. You're going to cut me off. Pete Buttigieg hates your guts. Let me prove it. He swore to defend the Constitution of the United States. Second Amendment says shall not be infringed. And you, if you want a background check, you're for infringement. If you're, you're, if you're the NRA who initiated the Nick's instant background check system, you are against the Second Amendment. I don't care how much you say you're for it. And then you have MSNBC, uh, CBS, all these people going, well, you know who our enemy is. Our enemy is the NRA. No, the enemy is the NRA. Uh, the, the NRA is the enemy of the people. And it's all a dog and pony show because we got, oh, we got to take care of big old Goliath over there. Goliath's over on the Philistine Hill. His name is the NRA. And it's because of Goliath. It's because of the NRA that all these people are getting shot up because they got all the money for the gun lobby. It's the gun lobby, guys. And then you try to incite Americans against the NRA and go, yeah, yeah, we need to be against the NRA. Hello? Uh, can I get a hold of my congressman? Yeah, I want them to take guns away from us. Look, guns are personal property. You can't have my property. You can't have my neighbor's property. You can't have my viewer's property. We all need to freaking stand up and be men and engage resistance and you know, I, it makes you want to. I don't. I don't. I don't cuss, but I, it makes you want to cuss. Seek your safe space, fine. But I don't want to seek it. I want to engage resistance. I want to prepare my mind. I want to prepare my heart. I want to prepare my body, and I want to prepare to protect my family. Do you realize if that mother and father had a firearm, they wouldn't have to throw their bodies on and become a shield, a human shield for their baby? They could pull. Why not? Do you do you not think if we could pull that mother and father up from the dead, they would go? Hell yeah, I want firearms training. Hell yeah, I want access to a freaking AR-15 or an AK-47 or a, an Uzi, a fully automatic Uzi. They should not, nobody has the right to bar you from a fully automatic weapon. Oh, we have full, we have, uh, we have automatic weapons bans. It's been, it's been instituted since God knows when. We already know that's illegal. What's illegality? We need to wake up, smell the smelling salts of life and take it upon ourselves to defend ourselves and our families. Politicians will not and cannot defend you with laws that remove your freedoms. 
Benjamin Franklin said, and I've said it time and time again, memorize it, but don't put it in your head. Let it sink down in your heart. Those who would give up essential liberty for a little temporary security. There's my safe space. There's me not engaging resistance, the resistance of life. Deserve neither liberty nor security. I'll see you guys in the next heavily censored shadow ban video. If you guys enjoy these videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, and share it with everybody you know. Also, check out over 100 hard-hitting designs in the shirt store, and if you want to support more content, hit me up on Patreon or PayPal. All those links will be in the description and in the pinned comment. I'll see you guys in the next heavily censored shadow ban video.